Well, hello everybody, it's Dr. Drake 63 here with my old friend Buck. We're coming to you from North Central Montana. It's our annual deer hunt here with family, friends, and uh, we've had another successful hunt. It's been crazy though. Uh, 30 plus mile an hour winds pretty much constantly for uh, the time we've been hunting. And uh, stuff that uh, definitely not used to back home in Minnesota. And uh, want to talk about those kind of shots. Going to talk about the Remington 7600 pump, which uh, is a 308 new rifle we tried this year. I've got some thoughts on it. We filled our tags. That's what counts. But uh, uh, we'll talk about that too. And uh, apparently Buck does not have any additional comments. And uh, so I hope you enjoy watching. And uh, please remember to leave comments at the end. Thanks. Anybody who's uh, watched any number of my videos on my channel knows that I've been hunting this last uh, several three, four years with uh, the rifle on the left, which is the Remington 783 chambered in 270 Winchester. This year we took the rifle on the right, which as you notice is a pump action rifle. It's the Remington 7600 and 308. I've got several videos talking about this. This was basically a closeout special I picked up at uh, Gander Mountain's going out of business sale. Under normal circumstances, the differences in ballistics between a 270 Winchester round and a 308 or 762 by 54, or I'm sorry, 51, um, basically. Typically, in all things being equal, they perform similarly. But if you look at them both together, it's pretty clear to see. Um, more, more case length, hence more powder, hence more power on the 270 because it is nothing more than a neck down 30 odd six. Here with the 308, what you have is a larger diameter. But in high winds, that ballistics coefficient <clears throat> can be a problem. So in other words, uh, imagine that uh, you're throwing a couple Frisbees out and one's got a little bit bigger diameter than the other in the wind. Which one's going to blow more? Think about it that way. So again, usually not going to make a lot of differences. But when you start talking about extreme high wind shooting, stuff that uh, you certainly wouldn't want to match shoot in, um, those differences come into play. And uh, that's one of the things I was thinking about as I was hunting with this round exclusively. Only brought one rifle, and I brought the Remington 7600, happened to be in 308. Wanted to give it a try. And uh, for the conditions, I might have been slightly better off suited with this round right here, the 270 Winchester, which many contend for a long time, for 75 years, that this is the best deer cartridge you can get. Somebody else can argue that one. They don't call this big sky country for nothing. Things can actually hide out from you in plain sight, so you've got to keep a keen eye and need to scan the horizon. The wind starts blowing across north central Montana and there isn't a heck of a lot to stop it. Here, just north of the Missouri breaks. Look here how windy it is here. Give you as many pictures and videos as we can. At the end of the day, a beautiful, beautiful big sky to look at. We enjoyed uh, an area that was uh, full of game, lots of mule deers and white tails as well. Beautiful scenery. And of course, unexpected roadblocks on our way to and fro. At the end of the day, we all filled our tags and had a great time. The Remington 7600 pump and 30-08 is a predictable and accurate rifle. So, right out of the gate, that's my experience with it so far. But there's a few things that prevent this from being as accurate of a rifle as, say, a bolt action. Let's take a look at some of them. I don't know if you can see this right here, but this tube right here is what holds eventually the barrel on. 
Um, it's what holds the caulking mechanism and basically what it does is it goes into this receiver right here which is aluminum and so you've got uh, you've got you've got a much less positive not as strong kind of scenario with the construction of this gun and that's just inherent you know that's a sacrifice you make in order to get the, the quicker follow-up shot action okay what I found on this particular trip out west was that follow-up shots really weren't the issue um, the issue was getting that first shot right because once the game starts getting a move on and you're talking about the kind of conditions we were looking at, sometimes 45 degree downhill angles, um, the entire time of the trip, minimum 20, 25 mile an hour winds, um, but typically 30 to 40. So it's kind of crazy. So this is a gun that I actually have some thoughts for. Um, I, I'm starting to, and had already had the thought, that I'd like to take about four inches off this barrel and make this an 18-inch carbine, which has been done with the 30-odd six, um, and make this a predominantly woods gun. When I have a rifle in 270 that shoots a half-inch group at 100, 100 meters, and this does one and a quarter, again, at... at at the closer in distances, that doesn't matter as much, but you you start adding up what happens when you get out to um, 200 and plus, well, then that gets amplified with that wind, and you can at times be looking at some scenarios that just aren't too slick. Too, much, uh, too many different margins, slight as they may be, adding up, and... Uh, um, I would have to say too that uh, from an observational standpoint uh, this trigger is a handicap. I understand there are some aftermarket alternatives that are slight improvements but one thing I do not like about this gun is that you cannot put a standard adjustable trigger on it. Again, not, not, a, not that important a feature as important a feature if you're using it as a brush gun, a tree stun gun, something where, you know, even open sights could be used. So, you know, my two big critiques on, on this gun are, are the way that it's put together and you're, and you're basically sacrificing some accuracy there and this trigger. Um, bottom line, though, is uh, I, I, uh, the gun did its job. And uh, when I did my job and um, was able to account for the wind, we ended up in good shape. Three deer, five shots taken, and of course you know I'm going to spend the rest of my life thinking about the two I missed because they were both really nice bucks. I'd have to say that I'm a big fan of this particular rifle, and I can see a lot of uses for it, especially for the types of hunting where a follow-up shot is often prescribed. I like the simplicity, it cycles well, and uh, can see a lot of uses for this type of firearm. I really like it. It kind of has the same kind of appeal to me that uh, my lover actions do. I would say though that for distances over 200 meters for open range hunting, that I do prefer the more solid build of a bolt action type rifle and uh, the fact that it's going to lock up um, a little bit tighter in terms of uh, uh, the bolt and so forth than this particular type of uh, firearm will. So again, uh, um, for longer range hunting I would not recommend this particular type of firearm just like I wouldn't recommend a Browning BAR or a semi-auto hunting rifle. I think bolt action is your most accurate platform. Um, that said, um, I believe this is going to come in handy for my Minnesota hunt here in a few weeks. Uh, that is more of a tree stand type of scenario, and uh, we're looking forward to once again using this rifle this season. I hope you've enjoyed watching this particular video. We had a great time on our hunting trip. I'd like to remind everyone to please support the National Rifle Association. 
Thanks again for watching. It's DR Drake 63. Have a great day and happy hunting, everyone. This has to be so totally embarrassing for you, man.